I want to name this fraction, I'm going to name it in two different ways. One way is as a fraction greater than 1, or otherwise known as an improper fraction, and the other way is as a whole number or a mixed number. So the way that the fraction work is, the way that the fractions work is that the top number, the numerator, is how many pieces that you are talking about or how many shaded parts there are. So how many shaded parts are there in this? There's 4, 8, 12. So 12, 12 is our numerator. The denominator is always the trickiest part. That number is, you go back to the first shape and you say, how many pieces did I cut it into? What's the size of that piece? It's cut into four pieces. It's a fourth sized piece. So my denominator is going to be four. So I would write this as 12 fourths. And then you should also see pretty quickly that if you want to turn it into a whole number or a mixed number, it's basically division. And what do you get if you have 12 fourths? You get three holes. And that's what you see here, three holes. Each one of them can be represented as a fraction. So this is four fourths and another four fourths and another four fourths. And what do we get if we add those all together? You can also see from previous lessons that if I add four fourths and another and another, I'm going to get 12 fourths. So that denominator, that bottom number, is really important to know how do you get it and how does it stay consistent. So whether I'm adding them across or looking at a model, I need to know where does that bottom number come from. So here's a few more. I'll show you a model, pause it and try to write it down, and then check your work. Here's another thought process you can have in your head while you're thinking about this. Uh, okay, we want to know how many parts are shaded. So in 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, and 18. So 18 is my numerator. There are 18 parts shaded. And the denominator, think of it like this. Imagine these are pizzas. Right now, how many pieces do I have? I have 18 pieces. And if I said, all right, I'm going to give one piece to each person, how much does that each one person get? They get one out of six pieces. So they get one sixth of the pizza. So if I think of my denominator, my denominator is the size of the piece or how many pieces that one whole is cut into. So since it is cut into six pieces, we call that a sixth. So we would say that we have 18 sixth sized pieces. So that's why this denominator is really important to know that we always go back and we say, what is the size of that piece? That's how we name it. And the top number is how many of those pieces do we have? Then the rest of it is kind of easy. We just think of division. 16 divided by, uh, 18 divided by 6 will be 3, and that is my 3 holes. If I were to take away some of these, so let's say I take away just one of them, I still have the same thought process. How many pieces do I have that are shaded? Now I have 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And still, if I gave out one piece to each person, they would be getting the same size piece. So I would name my denominator by the name of that piece, which is still a sixth sized piece. So it would be 17 sixth. And you would think of it as, I have 17 of these, but what's the size of that piece? It's a sixth sized piece. You should start saying these phrases in your mind as you're solving it because you're teaching yourself a thought process. So the more times you say it or think it, the easier time you're going to have every time you get to a new problem, your mind is already working for you. So say it to yourself. How many parts are shaded? That's my numerator. How many parts are shaded? Three, six, nine. So my numerator is nine parts. The top number is what we're talking about. The bottom number is the size of the part or how is it cut up? So I go back to one of them. It's cut into three pieces. So it's a third sized part. So my denominator is going to be three. I can check this really easily because if I divide it, what do I get if I divide nine divided by three? I get three. And that is the number of holes that I have. You can think of it also as this. This is one hole. It's three thirds. That's one hole. And another three thirds. That's another hole. 
and another 3 thirds. That's the third whole. And so when you have a fraction with a larger numerator than the denominator, you know that it's more than one. Okay, there's two questions for this one. For the shaded part, I look at all the shaded parts. How many are there? There's 4, 8, 12, 13. So 13 will be my numerator. My denominator is the size of the part. So I go back and I say, what is that cut up into? It's cut up into fourths. So my denominator is a fourth. So two strategies. I either know I have four fourths up here, four fourths up there, and my leftover amount, which is one fourth. So if I add all of those together to get a mixed number, what will I get? There's one hole, two holes, three holes, so there's three holes. And what's my leftover? One fourth. So then now I want to know, just as an unrelated separate question, what is the part that is unshaded? How do I name that? In that case, I go over here. How many parts are unshaded? There's three parts that are unshaded. So that becomes my numerator. I don't need this anymore. And for my denominator, what's my denominator? So it still matters what is the size of each piece. It's still a fourth sized piece. <coughs> so my denominator is going to be four. Okay. So no matter what, whether you're talking about the shaded part or the unshaded part, the size of the piece, the denominator is going to stay the same because we didn't change how we cut it. We're only changing whether we're talking about a shaded part or an unshaded part. How many parts are shaded? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 are shaded. And what's the size of the part? It's still 8. So my improper fraction or my fraction greater than 1 is going to be 12 eighths. If I turn that into a mixed number, the model makes it super easy because how many holes do I have? I have one hole. And what's my leftover fraction? It's one, two, three, four. Four out of the denominator is still the size of the piece. So it's one and four eighths. <clears throat> Here's where you can see how to reduce it. Why do we sometimes say, or actually a lot of the times, we say let's reduce this to one and one half. How, how can we visualize that? Well, if I did this, if I darkened this line so that I would see that, hmm, there's four that are shaded and four that are unshaded. If I made the pieces so that it, instead of being cut into four parts, it's only cut into two parts, then half of it is shaded, half of it is not shaded, then I would have one half. So there's just a quick visual for how the simplification process works. It's like combining the pieces so that you get more of the shaded part to be connected. Even though you're not changing the shading, you're just changing the, the pieces, the amount of pieces. So now instead of eight pieces, now I only have two pieces and one of them is going to be shaded. As a fraction, I say how many parts are shaded? Four. And what is the size of the part? I go back, it's cut into two pieces, so my denominator is two. If I divide that, I can clearly see that I have two whole amounts. How do I name that fraction? I still name it as however many parts are shaded, now it's three. What's the size of the part? It's still a half size part, so it's going to be three over two. That as a mixed number is going to be one, and what's left over? One half is left over. How do I name the unshaded part? In that case, I'm just talking about this one. And what is the size of the piece? It's a half size piece. So this one is going to be represented as one half. So going between, again, the shaded and the unshaded, it just matters which part we're talking about. The size of the piece, the denominator, is going to stay the same.